tell us, we've got to know, um, <laughs> every pilot has a call sign. Yeah. What yeah. is yours? So I have two of them. Uh, one of them is Cheery Nixon. Apparently I look like President Nixon, but on the happy side. Well, I'm not a crook. Hello, I'm Chris Cox. Today I'm sitting down with Cortland Hansen, our new fixed wing chief flight instructor. So Cortland, how long have you been with SU Aviation? I started in the middle of 2018, so just over four years now. And what inspired you to apply for SUU? Yeah, so I, I came from out of state and uh, I heard the SUU's reputation and I heard there was an opening, so I applied and shortly thereafter I was accepted, so came over and started teaching. So when you started, did you come in as a flight instructor? Did you go straight into an assistant chief role? Yeah. Uh, so, what was that process like? So I started, uh, I was hired on as the assistant chief. Um, back in 2018, so I, I went right into the assistant role, uh, kind of uh, mirroring some roles that I did previously. So, so mirroring roles you did previously, did you have previous assistant chief or chief experience? Yeah, so I started a flight school and I also had some assistant chief experience prior to that. And so yeah, just it matched it and the, the area is great, the, destiny out, the, the training out here is great, and the reputation was even better. So. It was a good move for, for me and my family. So Court, you had mentioned that you had heard about SEU and that's what inspired you to apply here. Where yeah. did you hear about us? Yeah, so uh, I have a lot of time uh, flying Cirrus aircraft before I came to SEU. And so I heard through um, that network that SEU is purchasing a large fleet. And so I started looking up the company and found out some really cool things. And about how long after that did you start here with SEU? Probably about a year later. Yeah, it was about in 2017, and then I applied and was hired on mid-18, so. Awesome. And what were you doing before um, flight instruction or, yeah. or before SUU, I should say? Yeah, so I, I have some roots in the, in the corporate world. I was also a flight instructor, so I did flight instruction and then corporate flying in the Cirrus, so. What inspired you to come back to flight instruction? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I love teaching. I've been teaching since I've been about 21, 19, well actually 19 to 21. Um, I've been teaching in high school, uh, I've been teaching in, in the aircraft, and then being able to jump back in and just continuing that, it just kind of was my niche. So Cortland, what do you enjoy most about flight instruction? So I, I, uh, one thing I like about flight instruction is uh, watching a student and their excitement for what they want to do for a career and being able to be that avenue. So to help them enter and watch them do that, uh, to fly. Like people don't fly, like humans, we can't, we don't have wings, we can't fly. And so we jump into this apparatus called an aircraft and we go fly and so I get to share with them how to do that safely. So we go from, I don't know how to do it to I'm doing it by myself to I get to get paid and make a career out of it. And I think that's the best part, seeing the students light like turn on, like they get it. They know how to do this safely. Light bulb. Light bulb. <laughs> Light bulb. Yeah, that. And tell us a little bit more about how you actually got into aviation, right? So yeah, my, my story began with my grandpa Cal. As, uh, I grew up with him, he raised me. He's my father figure. And he told me all his war stories. And I sat there listening as we tinkered with everything under the sun in his little workshop. Uh, I finally got to actually fly an airplane when, in 2004, and that's when I started my flight training. And uh, about 2000, and I believe it was nine, I was ready to hit the industry. And so I've been teaching ever since 2009. So let's back up for just a minute. Tell us a little bit more of what your flight training was like once yeah. you finally got into aviation. Sure, I think everybody has a different path on how they achieve their certificates and ratings. But yeah, mine was simply, um, I wanted to go Air Force, didn't, didn't have that option. So I went civilian, and so I went through a, a university and some flight schools. And so I transferred a lot. So every certificate that I ever got, I was at a different school, um, trying to figure it out on my own. Um, that would probably be something I would tell somebody to do, is do a little bit more research and not just jump in head, headstrong. Um, look at it and then probably pick a school and stick with it. What things should they be looking at as they yeah. are searching for the school that's right for them? So number one is like, does it fit well? Um, is the timing, is their pace okay? Uh, I would definitely look at what the school can produce. Like, are they producing good pilots? Are they safe, what their safety rating is? I'd also probably look at their curriculum, their syllabus, um, seeing how many hours it's gonna take to go from you know, an entry level student to a you know, pilot leaving their program. So everyone has something funny that occurs through their flight training. What was the funniest part of your flight training? Well, one, the first story that comes to my mind is uh, I was taking a brand new student 
Uh, he was just working on his, his private certificate, so just brand new. And we went on a cross country. And as we were flying, it was around lunchtime, and so I ordered um, a burrito and a pizza slice using the Unicom frequency. I also ordered a cab so that we could go check out the city. And so we landed, had the food ready, and then went around and looked at the city. And what was your student's reaction to that? <laughs> He's like, he called it a fly-through. You know, like a drive-through? Yeah. yeah. He's like, I didn't know we could do a fly-through. And I said, yep, that's, the, that's what it's all about. And, he's, and, and I think that hooked him because it's stuff like that. It's the, it's the uniqueness of an instructor that really puts an imprint on a student and their future career. And, and it was a lot of fun for me too, just to show the student what, what the power of aviation has. Absolutely no doubt. That was probably <laughs> a very memorable experience for your student. Um, where's that student at now? <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's now working for the airlines. Court, you mentioned you started flying in about 2004. Yeah. Throughout your career, what aircraft have you flown? Yeah, so I've flown a lot of the general aviation aircraft out there um, today. So mainly the Cessna classes, uh, I've flown the Beechcraft and the Piper classes, uh, high performance. I've done uh, the Moonies. I've had uh, a lot of experience in the Vans and the Zenith aircraft, uh, tailwheel, multi-engine. So a lot of, yeah, like I said, a lot of just the general aviation aircraft. Right, so it sounds like you've got a lot of time in the piston world. Do you have any jet time? I do, I have a little bit of jet time. Not as much as I want though, so. Yeah, I, I flew the Citation for a little while, uh, right seat, but I was never the captain there. But uh, due to family stuff, I had, uh, it was better for my family to stay in the flight instruction world. Going back to your flight school days, sure. what would you have done differently? Well, I'd probably, yeah, I, I tried to do everything by myself. So I'd, I'd say what I would do differently is to try to find more friends that were going through the program at the same time and, and do like uh, study hall groups, uh, workshops with them, back seating, like jumping on their flights. Uh, so I could learn a little bit more from their mistakes, so I didn't have to make all those mistakes myself. Um, what would I do more is probably find a flight school and stick with it. I, I bounced around a lot just because I was trying to figure it out. I, that did not work for me. Um, it took me probably two to three more years than it should have. What advice would you give to budding pilots just starting out in their aviation career? Yeah, so my grandpa Cal always said, if you want to live until you're bald, you got to land or fully stalled. That's the best advice I can tell you. Energy management, baby, energy management. That so, sounds like wonderful advice. Yeah, uh, from care Grandpa. Care to elaborate a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. so um, when you manage energy in the aircraft and you're trying to land the airplane, you wanna come in with a, with a least amount of energy so you don't bounce off the runway and destroy either your passengers or the aircraft. And so he'd always, uh, my grandpa was bald, so he'd always point to his head and say, if you wanna live until you're bald, you gotta land it fully stalled. Looks like you are working your way. I there. am definitely working on that. Yeah, absolutely. No, but <laughs> on, in, in all seriousness, I think the best thing that a, an aviator can do is uh, find something that they love to do and they'll never work a day in their life. So um, that was some other advice I got from my grandfather too. And I really love flying. I could have gone in any direction in any, uh, any career I probably wanted to go, um, but I loved aviation. And so I said, you know what? I don't want to work a day in my life. I want to fly every day of my life. And so here I am. Sounds like your grandpa had a pretty big role in your career with yeah. aviation. Yeah, he did. Tell us, we've got to know, um, <laughs> every pilot has a call sign. Yeah. What yeah. is yours? So I have two of them. Uh, one of them is Cheery Nixon. Apparently I look like President Nixon, but on the happy side. So that's what they call me. Well, I'm not a crook. I don't know where that came from. Uh, <laughs> it's not even a cool story. That's my problem. <laughs> Um, so what would be that second one? Because I'm looking for a cool story here. <laughs> yeah, my second one's kind of lame too. I call it N-1 um, because I always need somebody. Uh, I don't know where I got that one either. Apparently I forget stuff. You appear to be the king of dad jokes. So tell yeah. us your favorite airplane joke. Dude, yeah, one of the, well, I love sharing dad jokes on the radio. I probably will get in trouble from the FAA for that one day. But uh, my favorite, here, here's a good one, all right? So what's a pilot's favorite bagel? <laughs> I can't even think of a, a flavor of a bagel right now. It's a plain bagel. <laughs> so wrapping up, <laughs> who was your favorite instructor? Who had yeah. a lasting impression? Yeah, so I, uh, I had a lot of instructors growing up. That's one of the things that if you go into the aviation industry, you need to understand. Um, you're the constant. 
you're gonna have instructors come and go throughout your career, including ones that might work for you. Um, but I have two that I really remember, uh, Justin and Chris. They were my primary instructors and they, they taught me a lot about how important it was to be safe and to have fun um, and basically built my foundation that I have today. So um, I don't think I'd be where I was without my family's influence or the mentor or the mentorship that I, I received from them. Absolutely. And flight instructors play an incredible role in yeah. your outcome within aviation. Yeah, I'm, you know, there's, I, I won't forget a student. I, I, I've worked with students, I might forget their name, but I won't forget who they are because, because of that impact that they had on me or vice versa. Well, Court, thank you so much for your time today and allowing us the opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate being here and look forward to being the chief and helping SUU and all the other pilots that will come. And uh, if you ever want to hear a dad joke, 123.0 near Cedar, I'll be there. <laughs>